Acts 5 1-42, Through the Bible. Chapter 5. Theme, Death of Ananias and Sapphira, Second Persecution. As we come to Chapter 5, we are continuing to see the effects of the great sermon that Simon Peter gave. Also, we are introduced to the first defection in the Church, followed by the death of Ananias and Sapphira, who were Christians, but were not living on the high spiritual level of the early Church. At the end of Chapter 4, we were introduced to a man, by the name of Barnabas. He will be before us again. He was one of the wonderful saints in the early church, a true man of God. He was the first missionary partner of the Apostle Paul, when they went into the difficult Galatian area, and yet, God marvelously blessed their ministry there. Barnabas had given quite a sum of money to the church. He had made a generous contribution, and everyone was talking about it. I imagine he received a great deal of publicity for his generosity. Remember, that in the early church, they had all things common. It reveals the fact that they were on a high spiritual level, to be able to do this. Now, the first defection comes in. Having all things common could not continue, and did not continue, simply because of the carnal nature that is in mankind. Death of Ananias and Sapphira. But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, Acts 5 1. It is obvious, that they were imitating Barnabas. They saw that he got a certain amount of publicity, and they thought it would be nice, if they could get that kind of publicity too. They wanted it. I have found, that there are people who will give in order to be noticed. I recall a meeting with businessmen in Pasadena, when I was a pastor there. We were planning to start a youth organization, and we were asking these men to give donations for the founding of this movement. It was decided that donations would not be made public. I was informed, that one of these men, would contribute very little, if he were not given the opportunity to speak out publicly, to let everybody know how much he was giving. It is quite interesting, that he contributed a small amount. After the meeting, he confided in one of the men, that he had intended to give about ten times that amount, but he had expected to be able to stand up, or at least raise his hand, to indicate how much he had given. You see, pride is still in human nature today. That was the condition of Ananias and Sapphira and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part, and laid it at the apostles' feet, Acts 5 2. There was nothing wrong with the fact that they kept back part of the money. They had a right to do that. The property had been theirs, and they had the right to do with the money whatever they wished. Today, we in the church, are under grace. We are not constrained to give any certain amount. Someone may say, we ought, to give a tithe. In the early church, they were giving everything they owned. Ananias and Sapphira did not give all, but kept back part of it, which they had a right to do. Their problem, their sin, was that they lied about it. They said they were giving all, when actually, they were keeping part of it for themselves. I don't like, to have people sing the song, that talks about putting my all, on the altar. Unfortunately, that makes liars out of the people who are singing. We need to be very careful about the songs we sing. A vow to the Lord, should never be made lightly. Ananias and Sapphira said they were laying all on the altar, but they were lying about it. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, and to keep back part of the price of the land? Acts 5 3. The sin of this man, and his wife, was that they lied about it. Whiles it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God, Acts 5 4. There are people today, who deny that the Holy Spirit is God. You will notice, that Simon Peter believed he was God. First, he says, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Then he says, Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. The Holy Spirit is God. And Ananias, hearing these words fell down, and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things, Acts 5 5. There are those today, who think that Simon Peter caused the death of this man, Ananias. They even blame him for his death. I want to absolve him of this crime. Simon Peter, was probably as much surprised as anyone, when Ananias fell down dead. I don't think, that he knew at all what was going to happen. Do you know who struck Ananias dead? God did. Do you feel that you want to bring charges against God? Do you want to call the FBI, 
to tell them that God is guilty of murder? May I say to you, if you can give life, you have the right to take it away. This is God's universe. We are God's creatures. We breathe His air. We use bodies that He has given to us. My friend, He can take our bodies any time He wishes to. God is not guilty of a crime. This is His discipline within the church. God is the one who is responsible, for the death of Ananias and Sapphira. And the young men arose, wrapped him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much? And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out, Acts 5 6-9. Simon Peter knows what will happen to her. He did not know what was going to happen to Ananias, but now it is quite obvious what will happen to this woman. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost, and the young men came in, and found her dead, and, carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things, Acts 5 10 11. There are two things that amaze me about this incident. One, is the fact that a lie, such as these two were living, could not exist in the early church. There was a holiness of life in the church. Ananias and Sapphira, although they were saved, lied to the Holy Spirit, and were removed from the company of believers. They had committed the sin unto death. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them, that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death, I do not say that he shall pray for it, 1 John 5 16. This was a sin unto death, which Ananias and Sapphira committed. This kind of sin could not exist in the early church. There was defection in the church, and it required discipline. However, after this experience, the church would never be as pure as it was before. Up until this time, they had all things common. This incident almost ruined them. We shall see more of this in the next chapter. Fear came upon all the church, and fear came upon people who heard of these things. Power would continue in the church, and multitudes would be saved. Yet, the church would never be as pure, as in those first days of existence. The other amazing thing, is the spiritual discernment of Simon Peter. This also is lacking today. I was very much amused, at a young man who came to me in a Bible class not long ago. He told me, he had the gift of discerning of spirits, and he could tell the truth from the error. Then he quoted one of the worst heretics today. I questioned him again, about his gift of discernment of spirits, of truth and error, and then asked him, whether he approved of the man whom he had just quoted. Oh yes, he said, this man speaks the truth. I told him, that I didn't believe he had any special gift, he just thought he did. Today, the worst kind of hypocrite can get into our Bible churches. They are not good at coming to Bible studies, I have discovered that, but they can hold offices and even run the church. If those who lied to God in our churches were to drop down dead, we would have a lot of funerals. The undertakers would be doing a land office business. And by the hands of the apostles, were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women. Acts 5 12-14. Notice, that the apostles exercised the apostolic gifts. Gifts of healing, and gifts of miracles, were signed gifts that were given to the apostles. They did many signs among the people. The discipline in the church had put a fear on the people, and had stopped the revival. Yet, there were those who were still being saved. Believers were being added to the Lord. We know that by AD 300, there were millions of people in the Roman Empire, who had turned to Christ. Insomuch, that they brought forth the sick into the streets, and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by, might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one, Acts 5 15-16. May I compare this to modern faith healing? Modern faith healers never heal all the people who come to them. Have you ever noticed that? The apostles had signed gifts, friend. No one in the church since then, has had those gifts. 
People were healed, every one of them. They emptied the hospitals. This was the power of the early church. We must remember, that at that time, there was no written New Testament. The church is built on Jesus Christ, He is the cornerstone, and the apostles were witnesses to Christ. The sign gifts, were given to them, to demonstrate the fact that they spoke with God's authority. Today, we have a written New Testament as our authority. The second persecution. We have seen, that there was discipline within the early church. Now, we find that there is persecution from without. When the apostles exercised their gifts, they produced a reaction. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, and laid their hands on the apostles, and put them in the common prison, Acts 5 17-18. Notice, that the Sadducees are leading in the persecution. It was the Pharisees who had led in the persecution against Jesus, it is the Sadducees who lead the persecution against the early church. So, the apostles are arrested for the second time, and are put into prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors, and brought them forth, and said, Acts 5 19. This translation should be, an angel, and not, the angel, in the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord, was none other than the pre-incarnate Christ, but now Christ is the man in glory, at God's right hand, and He is the one, who is directing the activity of His apostles. Today, unfortunately, much of the time, His hands and His feet are paralyzed, because the people in the church are not moving for Him in this world. Jesus Christ wants to move through His church. He wants to move, through you and me, if we permit Him. This is not Christ who appeared here, it was an angel. Go, stand, and speak in the temple to the people, all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple, early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But, when the officers came, and found them not in the prison, they returned, and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors, but when we had opened, we found no man within, Acts 5 20-23. This is the same sort of thing, that happened at the resurrection of Christ. The stone wasn't rolled away to let Jesus out, He was out, before the stone was rolled away. The stone was moved, to let those on the outside come in. The same thing happened here. The doors did not need to be opened, to let the apostles get out. They were out long before the doors were unlocked. Now, when the high priest, and the captain of the temple, and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted of them whereunto, this would grow. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison, are standing in the temple, and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers, and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you, that ye should not teach in this name? And, behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us, Acts 5 24-28. People were listening to the apostles. They were good witnesses. They were real missionaries. Jesus had said that the gospel was to go out, first in Jerusalem. We see that this has been done, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Then Peter, and the other apostles answered, and said, We ought to obey God, rather than men, Acts 5 29. The apostles were obeying what their Lord and Master had told them to do. Believers are commanded to obey civil authority, except when it comes in conflict with the commandment of God. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree, Acts 5 30. Jesus Christ was hanged on a tree. It was not a nice, smooth piece of timber with a crossbar, as we see it pictured today. It was a tree. Him hath God exalted with His right hand, to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel, and forgiveness of sins. And we are His witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey Him, Acts 5 31-32. This is still the message to the nation Israel in Jerusalem today. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart, and took counsel to slay them. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people, and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space, 
Acts 5 33-34. Gamaliel wants the apostles excused so that he can talk to the Sanhedrin. This Gamaliel was an outstanding man and greatly respected. He was the teacher of the Apostle Paul, by the way. And said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves, what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Theudas, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered, and brought to naught. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee, in the days of the taxing, and drew away much people after him, he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone, for if this counsel, or this work be of men, it will come to naught, Acts 5 35-38. He is giving sage advice. But, if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God, Acts 5 39. Gamaliel gives examples of men, who had started uprisings and had a following, but after they were killed, their followers disbanded. Now, he advises them that the same thing will happen to Jesus and his followers. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles, and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go, Acts 5:40. If these men were innocent, they should have let them go. If these men were guilty, they should have held them and punished them. Beating them and then letting them go, was a sorry subterfuge. They should have listened to Gamaliel a little more carefully. Things aren't much different today. There is that gray line between guilty and not guilty. The courts today, let people off by giving them some light sentence. My friend, if a person is guilty, he should be punished. If he is not guilty, he should be let go with no sentence. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple, and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ, Acts 5 41-42. These apostles were marvelous men. They were rejoicing that they could suffer for the Lord Jesus. They continued to teach and to preach Jesus Christ. What is the Gospel? It is a person. It is Jesus Christ. Do you have Him, today? You either do or you don't. You either trust Him, or you do not trust Him. Either He is your Savior, or you do not have a Savior. That is the message. The Apostles did not cease to teach and to preach Jesus Christ.